I've done over $100 million in revenue for my clients with my digital agency. And today, I'm just gonna kind of take you guys through an ad account, it's kind of what we look at on a day-to-day -day basis when I open up the ad account. So here we have one of our accounts. We're just gonna start off with Triple L, be very direct. We always like to start off with Triple L. It's just easier for me to literally look at the last seven days of data, just to kind of get a general idea of what's going on with this particular store. So again, I'll always look at last seven days. I cannot stand at looking at yesterday or today because it gives me no real context of what the actual health is of an account. Facebook is inconsistently consistent. So some days should be positive, some days should be negative. That's totally okay as long as the overall seven days is hitting your goals. So first thing I like to look at is triple well. Look at the last seven days, what's going on? For this account right here, we did 50, almost $50,000 in sales, about 23K on ads. I'm Look, realistically, I'm looking at the sales. I'm looking at, are we trending up? Are we hitting our ROAS goals and our NC ROAS goals? So NC ROAS is more of what my agency focuses on because we're all about customer acquisition side. Overall ROAS is sometimes leveraged in some cases, not all the time, but sometimes. For this particular account, the client just wants to focus on overall ROAS because of some other constraints, which we'll talk about in a second. But in our case, we always focus on NC ROAS, and that's positively affected by the ads we run, the landing pages we use, the AOV, things like that, things that we have control over as the agency. Whereas overall ROAS, that's also gonna take into account returning customers, which is more impacted by email, SMS, and the types of products the client decides to launch for his existing customers or her existing customers. So our property focus is new customer ROAS, customers purchasing from the first time for the business and more specifically NCCPA, which is new customer cost for acquisition. I'm not aware of how to do this with Shopify or Facebook. I've only ever used Triple Well for this because I'm not really sure you can do it with Facebook and Shopify. I think you have to be on like Shopify Plus to get somewhat data on this. But as far as I'm concerned, Triple Well has just been the easiest way to look at this and, you know, just quite frankly, the easiest. And that's what I'm for. So, yeah, so I get a kind of good idea. We're at about 50K. We're trending up in the last seven days, which is good. We're also spending a little bit more. Our ROAS is down, net profits down a little bit. So then it comes down to what are the goals for this particular client? Because I work with a lot of clients, I'm always checking goals just due to, I can't remember everyone's goals every day. So like I always check our sheet. We have all of our goals for our clients. This particular client, they have a target of a 3X ROAS overall, but right now due to some inventory constraints, they can only do a hundred orders a day. So right now we're not really scaling up or scaling down. We're kind of holding that current scale and hitting those hundred orders a day. And we're just focusing on improving that ROAS. Um, they're perfectly happy with a two X. So I'm not going to, you know, scale up or down right now because again, we're just focusing on that hundred orders a day. Once we start doing more than a hundred orders a day, cause we improve everything. I actually have to start scaling back because we have to hold hundred orders a day. Again, that's purely just due to this particular client's restraint. They only have X amount of inventory right now and they won't be able to get new inventory for a couple months. So we have to hit that inventory goal because if we decide to scale like crazy right now, we'll run out of inventory and won't have anything to sell for this particular client. So we're pretty much just looking at like what's going on in the account. Let's say for example, if this particular client had like a 3X ROAS overall goal and last seven days we were not hitting that and we had to hit that. Whereas like this particular client, perfectly happy with a 2X. If we had a certain ROAS goal we had to hit and we were below it, then I'd start looking at, all right, cool. Maybe we need to start pulling back on ad spend a little bit, pull back by 20%, see how the next couple of days go in terms of performance. So next thing I'm gonna look at is the actual ad account itself. Here's the last seven days for this ad account. You know, this is actually a fairly new client too as well. We've only been working with this client for about 21 days now. Doubled revenue in the process. Awesome work by my team. And last seven days, here's what's going on. Again, I only look at last seven days. It's pointless to look at yesterday or today because it's, again, it's Facebook's consistently inconsistent with their, you know, like sales every day. So this account's already rocking and rolling the one campaign structure we recommend. If 
we need it to increase or decrease spin based off the overall performance I'm looking at now, then I would simply go ahead and just increase or decrease this. Uh, this particular account's like 90% Facebook ad spend. So this is all heavily correlated with how much we spend on Facebook. If we were like 50% Facebook, 50% TikTok, then like maybe I would look at more specific attribution per channel. But because we're 90% Facebook on this account, I don't need to when it comes down to like triple well. So right now going pretty solid here again we're hitting around that 620 purchases last seven days so just below that 100 orders a day um, so i don't really need to scale spin right now i don't need a lower spin because we're also hitting that particular robust target or you know happy with right now we're just improving profits how do we improve profits that's going to go more around the actual optimization of the ads itself so let's go deeper let's go to ad set level that's where i like to look next Overall campaign level really doesn't tell me much, but just decide, you know, more to see what the last seven days look like. Ad set level lets me see more what's going on as we have tested a couple different DCTs over the last seven days right here. You can see right here, I have my 105A, which has been a recent winning ad we found. I think we found this winning ad within the first week of working with this client, which has been awesome. So, you know, we have a few more like different DCTs that are starting to run, but yeah. So pretty much from here, because they're all like different DCTs, they're all their own ad sets. I'm more just looking at a high level. Okay, cool. And we know that we're our highest ad set. It's at $16,000 in spend over the last seven days with a $38 cost per acquisition. I'm pretty much looking at turning everything off below a $38 cost per acquisition. So like this one had a $49 cost per acquisition. This one had a $34 cost per acquisition. I know that that's actually less than 38 so i probably actually would turn this back on i'm not sure exactly what was the main reason why we turned this one off but those was one particular key reason we turned this one off 26 dollars leave it on 43 dollars turn it off 27 leave it on 25 i want to say it was a creative issue with the client why we turned this one off and then yeah i mean that's simply it right there now we do also have a couple things that we've launched and tested over the last couple of days. I want to say 106 testimonial right here. That's why 106 testimonial, 106 testimonial retest. So we just simply just launched another retest because again, that was a creative issue with that right there. And you can see like right 103, we turned off, just didn't get much spin over the last couple of days. This one, we did a landing page test, really didn't work well. Just a couple of variety of different things we've tested in this account. And yeah, so just pretty much turning things off that just had a less than pretty much that cost per acquisition over the last seven days that our top ad set's getting. Now, the reason why we judge everything based off the top ad set is because the top ad set is getting the most spin and due to it getting the most spin, it has the highest impact in that overall performance. All right. So if you're heavy on Facebook ads and your top ad sets getting all the spin, that's going to have the heaviest weight on overall performance. And that's essentially what we're looking at right here. A couple other things I like to look at here. This one also has like a 1.57 frequency. So this also shows to me that, hey, like you ideally want your frequency and your top ad set over the last seven days. Again, last seven days, top ad set frequency as close as possible to one. Now, if it's not a one, like for example, this case is a 1.57. Do I turn it off? No, I'd be stupid to turn it off because it's providing really good performance for us. So what my next objective would be is why is it appealing to such a small group of people and what can we do to create that broader appeal? That may be just the type of creatives we film just weren't that great in terms of like the editing and stuff. We just need the same messaging, same everything, just better editing. That's a little bit more appealing to the eye. It may be testing a new desire. It may be testing a new market awareness. It may be just taking literally the exact same person we used to film that ad and swapping in a different ethnicity or a different gender or a different age group. It can be a variety of different things we can do to appeal to a larger group of people. It's not always just new desire or new awareness level. Um, there is other little tweaks we'll do, try to do first before we try to switch to desire, awareness, and things like that. And again, you just more, you learn that through practice and repetition. It's not really something I can completely teach besides just, hey, try it out first, test the little things first, then go to those bigger things like new desires and awareness levels. Just quickly looking at, here's just why well, I see a lot of people make this mistake is I go campaign level, I select the campaign, then what I'll do is, is I won't select any ad sets at all. And I'll just click on this one right here, ad sets for one campaign. And then there you go, you can see ad sets for one campaign. You can see all the different things that's going on in this account. We have some images, we have some videos, we have all the good things in here. And you can see that's that 105A right there. It's worked really well over the last seven days and yeah again from here what i'll be looking at now is okay cool 
what's going on in this account in terms of like future creative tests. So we know performance is not where we want it to be. So what can we do to improve performance? We have a couple things we can control. That's the type of creatives, that the landing page, and that's the AOV. Landing page, creative, AOV. Those are three things that we have direct control over. So what can we do to improve those things? So I'll start off with, you know, like looking at that ad right now that's taking all the spin and looking at, okay, can, what's the easy wins, right? Can we take this ad right here, do some iterations to it to improve things? Can we do some variations to it? Can we just do some easy things of iterations and variations on this ad to find more winners? Like we know this ad's working for some reason. So let's go iterate on it, maybe like little tweaks and then variations where it's like, hey, this is a photo ad calling out how to scale Facebook ads, for example. Let's go do a video ad showcasing how to scale Facebook ads. So like just different types. I'm not saying you have to do photo and video, but you're saying like different types of content around that winning messaging right there. Easy, easy wins. Now, maybe we're already doing that. Maybe I take a look at the, the creative pipeline, for example, right here. This is my roadmap I use for all my clients where I just, we list all the different concepts we wanna put in the account and the different things we're working on, stuff like that. So maybe I look at the ad account or the pipelines, like cool, we already have those types of things in play. Then maybe I can start looking at, you know, where do we need to detour, right? So we're already doing some iterations and variations on the top ad. What are some new type of messaging we can focus on? What's a new customer avatar we haven't hit yet? What's a new problem that we can position our product in front of? What are these new concepts that we can create? And then I'll start going and do my research to a better understand. Okay, cool. Like, hey, what are the what are the different avatars? Okay, cool. We already touched this avatar. What's about this avatar right here? Different types of customers. And also understanding too, like, all right, what are the different desires we called out for that particular customer avatar? You know, like, for example, maybe a car enthusiast. Well, a car enthusiast might buy a car for the, how fast it goes. It might buy the car for how good it looks might buy a car for how well it performs around a track. Those are three different desires a car enthusiast might buy a car for. So what I'll look at is, okay, what are out of those three, what are the three things or what are, what are one of them we haven't tested or what's the one we've been focusing on and can we focus on other ones to test out around that particular customer avatar right there. So pretty much from there, that's when I'll go and start doing the, uh, writing down the hooks, research, improving my hooks, writing out the scripts and everything like that. And, you know, actually putting those creatives in the works and that those are going to our roadmap right here, which from the roadmap, then my team will execute on. And then eventually they'll turn into a DCT and being a new DCT. Like for example, like 113 was something recently we launched 113B, 113A posted note one not sure if y'all ever seen that before where you just take the product you put it down on like a tabletop and you put a post-it note on it like saying a type of hook or something like that so like my team just launched these new dcts and yeah i mean that's that's literally everything the actual ad account management itself takes like 10 15 minutes a day all of our time is spent in the editing the hiring of content creators the scripting process the you know research process and things like that and that's the things that allow us to find you know, winning ads like this, like 105A, it took us five minutes to upload that ad, upload that concept in the ad account as a new DCT, right? That's it. But it took us a while to write the hooks, do the research, write the scripts, get it filmed by our content creators, edit the content creators, edit the captions and stuff. All of this work that needs to be done prior to go in the ad account that gives it this type of result. We didn't just sit there in ad account, refresh the screen a hundred times a day, and then go throw some random ads in the account, and then boom, we found one on 5A. We did the work to achieve that outcome result that we won. Yeah, guys, hopefully that helps y'all out. That's just kind of me just poking in that account real quick, kind of what, the, the, how I look at it for a daily basis. I'll start back up tomorrow, I'll take a look through everything, check up on everything, and I'll just do that every single day to make sure we're taking the right actions for, you know, getting that performance we want and obviously look we find a few more 105 a's for this account and i say 105 a's as in like new winning ads like this that's how we're gonna be able to scale from that 2x to that 3x particular row ass that we're achieving for this particular account or, or looking to achieve for this account right here so but yeah hope that helps you guys out if you like this video make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video new videos every monday wednesday and friday and if you are a Shopify store owner, we specifically help Shopify store owners go from six figures to seven figures a month in revenue. Uh, if that is you, then click the link below. We've helped four brands now scale to seven figures a month and love to help you out be the next one. So thank you all so much for watching. My name is Nick Terrio. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Peace out.